Okay, I ordered one of the, uh, as described on Amazon, Touch and Glow brand um, uh, uh, high pressure sodium, whatever you call this type of light. And uh, Jordan U already got, I think, a couple of these more because they lowered the price even lower. It's absurd how cheap they're selling these for. And uh, these are kind of interesting. It's it, They're advertised as Touch and Glow brand uh, lights on there. And if you want a more in-depth video of all that, go ahead and look at that. Um, this is just like the one he ordered. It came in a box marked Utilitech. But if you look underneath it, it says uh, Utilitech 65 watt fluorescent. Of course, this is uh, just a sticker over this, and this is a um, 70 watt high pressure sodium light. The whole box has these stickers over it. You can see here it used to say white. Um, and there you go. The top of it's also a sticker, and this sticker actually goes over the seam in the box. It's obviously a sticker. <laughs> And you can see it mounted there on a building. And there it is at night on the same building. And as mentioned in Jordan's video, you can see that this is a realistic expectation of what the light will look like and how it will illuminate the area. It's not like some of those LED things where they show it and the picture shows that it's actually brighter than it is in the daytime, which is obviously not going to be the case. Let's go ahead and open this here. Always cut towards yourself while holding the camera. That way you can record it when you cut yourself. Now it feels like this is kind of just flopping around in the box. So we'll see what we come up with. Here's mounting pattern. I guess you can use that as like a template for mounting it. Oh, it does include a bulb. Okay. I have to put this camera... Let me go get the, uh... The camera holding up or this thing. Whatever you call this thing. I never use these. Okay, we need to turn... That light off. So, like mentioned, it does include a bulb, which I wasn't expecting. It's a pulse right high-pressure sodium. I don't remember if Jordan, I guess it included one. Sounds a bit broken. No, it's not. It's kind of rattly, but that's okay. see the etch that would be great there you go of course this is not a standard bulb it will not work in a regular fixture that is a high pressure sodium bulb which requires a ballast okay Nobody asked for your input. Um, the user manual is for a fluorescent light. You can see the CFL there. Interesting. Comes with these bolts and some little tiny itty bitty ones. So I guess I'm gonna have to assemble it. Here we have the refractor, whatever you want to call this thing. Feels decently thick. It's not the thickest in the world. I can almost break it. I can flex it. In fact, I did sort of break it there. Jeez, I barely touched it. Okay, well that's... 
either cheap or old or both. So that's not great. That should not have broke. See how that, if that's exposed to the elements, that's not going to be too great. Luckily, you can kind of get replacements of those. But and then we have this, which is bent. These kind of lights normally go for 50 some dollars, so if it's a little bit bent, that's fine. I think this, yeah, this goes on to the that. And that's what those little tiny nuts and bolts are for. And then in this box, we should probably have, what, a photo cell? Yep, in this box we got the photo cell, which obviously is what tells it if it is dark or not dark outside. To turn it on and off. And then we have the light itself. This is made of pretty decent metal. Um, I don't like how the ballast is just kind of floating around in there. Um, it is a Robertson ballast, which is actually a good quality ballast, but you can see it's kind of floating around in there. Now this has the same sticker that Jordan Hughes had. It says, uh, Bright Image Corporation 70 Watt Touch and Glow. And I bet it's just like his if we peel that sticker off. It still says Bright Image to Corporation Touch and Glow, but it says 65 Watt CFL. So that's very interesting. I'm going to. I'm going to take this uh, bulb socket out because I see a problem here that I don't really like. Where, where's my screwdriver? My good one. My crappy one? Either one. It doesn't really matter. Ah, uh, there's my good one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to turn back this light on again, so hopefully, yeah, you can still see. You see, one of those screws was nice and loose, the other one was tight as shit. So... all floating around in here. The igniter is also a Robertson. It's pretty heavy. So, I mean, the, the ballast and the igniter and all that's of good quality. The problem that I was seeing is this wire nut. It's really not big enough, I don't think. Or, oh, they just didn't even put the wire under the wire nut. We had quite a bit of... We still do. I gotta fix it. We have quite a bit of exposed wire poking out from under here. This wire nut... Okay, I'll be right back. This wire nut is too small. Okay, so I've got this put back uh, together. I put a bigger wire nut on there. I'm not too big of a fan of the way this ballast it's not gonna come out but it just kind of just kind of stuck in there so not too big of a fan of that but I mean that's okay it's a decent quality ballast decent quality igniter so this should last a good while got a nice ceramic socket in here um, So I think that should be okay. This is pretty good too. Um, it's obviously that they're just using up old stock. 
But why would they convert a... Why would they convert a um, regular, like a fluorescent light into a high pressure sodium? It just doesn't make sense. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, photo cell here and I'm going to, I guess, wrap it with some black tape here. I don't really have a better idea of what to do to keep it blacked out for now. The photo cell says touch and glow on it as well. So I don't know if this is a Utilitech or touch and glow maybe made these. And I think U Utilitech is a Lowe's brand, isn't it? I'm not sure about that either. But I think so. Okay, I got that taped. So I'll go ahead and put that on. Ooh. Okay. I guess it just makes that sound. I don't know. Okay. I would like it to stay up. I would like. Thank you for doing the opposite of what I said I wanted you to do. So I'm gonna put this bulb in here, and we'll turn it on without the uh, refractor first. Cut the lights off. And we'll go ahead and plug this guy in. There it goes, getting nice and orange. Ballast is silent. There you have it. I'll move it back here and let you see how it illuminates the area. Okay. And cut it off here. Does it hot ignite? Some of these do, some of them don't. Yes, it does. Some of these you have to wait for them to warm back up. I think that's mercury vapor I'm thinking of. Okay. Well, that got warm quick. This onto here. This would probably be been easier to do before I put the refractor onto that lens, but, or onto the, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Probably not. No, nope, that's correct. Screwdriver's non-metallic, or non... One. That one's not. There we go. Got one more. But we have two more screws. And I just noticed something. Following the trend of this thing apparently being a fluorescent light at one point, it says inside of here, risk of fire, 
65 watt self ballasted lamp. This is obviously not what goes in here. So let's go ahead and put our lamp back in here, which is not fluorescent. It is high pressure sodium. We'll put our photo cell on and we'll put it the three possible wrong ways we could do and then we'll do it the correct way, obviously. Okay, I'm going to have to at this point like this. Three, two, one. It should warm up rather quickly since it was just on. Indeed. Now the camera really doesn't pick this thing up well, does it? You can see the... Wow. The camera doesn't like it. Well, believe me, it puts out light, okay? Seems to do a halfway decent job at it. It's not the brightest, but then again, it's only a 71 watt or 70 something, 70 watt, I think it was. Uh, speaking of that, let's put it on the uh, kilowatt meter here and see what she says. So, you can totally read that. I'm sure you can. Obviously, zero watts, zero amps, 117 volts, 59 hertz, because for some reason we don't have 60 hertz. Fifty-seven. Huh. 56. It should be going up. Sixty one, there we go. I think it's still getting brighter, and I think. Let me cut the lights back off. Oh yeah, that's a lot brighter. I'm impatient. See, look how bright it is now. It's lighting up the whole area now. Drawing right at 70 watts now. I need to tighten this up more still or something. So we'll zoom back into the meter that I know you can totally see. We're drawing 72 watts. Now it went back down to 70. So I guess that means it's fully warmed up. Nope, back up to 71. Uh, you know what that was? That was a voltage dip because I turned the lights on. So 
so there, yeah, there you go. Touch and glow. I forget what they advertised it at. I think they called it a barn light. That might have been someone else. Anyway, the touch and glow uh, high pressure sodium light. It's here. It, it works. It does everything it says it was supposed to do. So, for $25, that's pretty good. Came with this Pulse Right bulb. I don't know if that's affiliated with them. Like if that's the one that would have come with a, with one of these lights originally, or if this is just some random brand of light that they bought and threw in. I'm really not sure. And I think the whole thing with these is kind of strange. But I won't complain. So there you have it. Okay, so I figured I would have a look at the Touch and Glow's website, and I mean it's a real website. Um, their copyright date is only 2010, and we see um, Bright Image Corporation. Looks like you can buy a new diffuser lens for only uh, $9.99 if that's the same one. It looks like it is. And we only have one security light. And that would be an LED light. Oh boy, LED. And honestly it looks like the exact same light, which it probably is just doesn't have a ballast and all that so basically it's a cheap version of the same thing that they can put a LED bulb in so that goes on to uh, confirm that yeah that the lights pretty much been um, discontinued um, so whatever they're selling from that Amazon link, and I'll show you. Um, what the hell? Why do I have to do that just to look at it? Like, okay, that's weird. There it is. So, yeah, they're probably just selling, I mean, I'm sure they're just selling um, used inventory. And I went back and watched uh, Jordan Yu's video, and his actually had a different ballast and igniter in his. Here's another listing, which appears to be the same thing, but uh, just a different listing. Touch and glow. And you can see it's got a at least uh, unbranded ballast in there. <laughs> really, they don't have any energy saving light bulbs. White cross arm and balls. Decorative white cross arm and gold balls. What? Okay. Oh, it's one of those things. It goes on a lamp post. Okay, I, I, I was confused. So, I mean, I can't say much for their quality, but, uh, you know, I can't say much because I'm not sure. Um, but I mean, touch and glow seems to be at least a, uh, somewhat genuine company. Now, if they're actually manufacturing all this stuff, I couldn't really tell you, or maybe they're just a name stuck on stuff. Um, 
I'm not sure. I'm also not sure why that, uh, I'm also not sure why that, um, light was branded as a Utilitech, maybe, uh, Touch and Glow was a, uh, OEM for Utilitech, and they made them. Five ninety nine isn't a bad deal for a four pack of extension cords either. This website is very poor quality. Bulb lifesaver. Well, this is pretty much an obsolete product. What does it do? Does it just like slowly ramp up the price or something? Or the price, the, the voltage? Let's just see. I'm obviously not going to buy anything. But I just want to see here. Is that real? Yeah, they accept PayPal. So... Presumably, I mean, they're a they're a real company, so it's not just like some random name, some Amazon seller stuck on something or whatever. Um, Bright Image Corporation. Interesting. Okay, 